Hello everybody. In this video, which happens to be the last video for part one, we're going to look at a microscope and a telescope, a uh, refracting telescope, one that uses two lenses, and a compound microscope that also uses two lenses. Okay, so I'm going to call up the PowerPoint. It is on our course page. Um, I'll just make sure you guys see where it is again go to our course page scroll down and right here microscope and telescope okay so let me go ahead and start that so um let's talk about the microscope first you guys probably have used a microscope before and if you think about it you might may remember that it has two lenses right an eyepiece lens that you look into and then what we call the objective lens which is close to the specimen in the slide. Um, both of those are positive lenses, so let's talk about how this works. We'll also see how we can treat a two lens system. Okay, so the objective lens is a positive lens with a very short focal length. Uh, it's very, very curved, which is why it's a relatively small lens. In fact, some microscopes, they may have uh, three objectives that you can rotate. You can choose one of three objectives. The lenses themselves, again, are very curved with a short focal length, so their diameter can't be very large. And the reason we want that short focal length is that we do want this to act as a projector lens. So we want the object to be relatively close to this short focal length lens so that we get a bigger real image formed not real far away though. Okay, so relatively speaking, it'll be far from the lens, but it's not going to be meters away, right? Because it has to be inside the tube of the microscope. So here's our object, very close to the focal point, but still outside of our objective lens. So we do recognize this as the projector geometry. If we do the ray trace, here's the first ray that goes through the back focal point, the parallel ray parallel to the optic axis. Here's the second ray we always draw through the center of the lens. Oh, and by the way, you should pay attention to the microscope because while you're not responsible for the microscope or telescope for a test, you won't see this in the summary notes, for instance. But there is a collected problem where you have to design a microscope. So this particular PowerPoint slide may, may help you. Okay, so there is the, uh, the ray trace for those two rays. Notice they intersect right there. So there is our real inverted bigger image. Again, this is acting as a projector. Now, what's neat about the two lens system is the image formed by this first lens, you can now treat as the object for the second lens. So these rays that we were tracing, we can forget about those. Okay, we'll come back to them though just to cl uh, clean things up, but let's just forget about those for now, and let's treat this green arrow as the object for the second lens. Now, the eyepiece lens, we want it to act as a simple magnifier, a magnifying glass. So we want to make sure that this image is inside the focal point, the front focal point of our eyepiece lens. So these orange dots represent the focal points of the eyepiece lens, we want to make sure the image formed by the objective lens is inside the focal point of the eyepiece lens. So now we'll do a ray trace. Usually the object for in our ray trace is pointing up. This one's pointing down. No problem. You've done enough ray traces now that you can handle that. Look, here's the ray parallel to the optic axis. That has to go through the back focal point of my positive lens. There it is. The other ray that we're going to draw, right through the middle of the lens, always. Now, if you notice, these two rays are, in fact, diverging. That's what we expect if this is acting as a magnifier. So we trace them back, and they appear to come from that point right there. There is our final virtual image. It is virtual. In order to see this, where, where does our eye have to be? What's well, going to have to be over here on the right catching those diverging rays, okay? All right, so we've got a projector lens and then a simple magnifier, a magnifying glass. 
That's what makes our microscope. Okay, so let's label some distances here. And th these will be important when you go to design your microscope in the homework problem. From the object to the objective lens, I'm going to call that P sub O. That's the object distance for the objective lens. That's what that subscript O stands for, objective lens. From the lens to the image is Q sub O, the image distance for the objective lens. Now, from that image to the eyepiece lens, that is the object distance for the eyepiece, P sub E. Because again, we're treating the image of the objective lens as the object for the eyepiece lens. And then from the eyepiece lens to the image that it forms, that virtual image, that's Q sub E. And that will, in fact, be negative when we're using our equations. Okay, now, I mentioned these green rays. We forgot about them. Oops, I'm sorry, wait, we gotta finish our labeling. So, so, so sorry, I forgot about the heights. Here is the objective object height. Here is the objective image height, HO prime. But notice that since that is the object for the eyepiece, that is equal to H sub E, the object height for the eyepiece. And then the image height for the eyepiece is the length of this orange virtual arrow, H sub E prime. Okay. All right. Now I can talk about these green rays. If you actually would do the refractions of these green rays, you would find out that they refract like that. They are also diverging. And if you trace them back, they will also appear to come from the tip of that image arrow, that point right there. Okay. It's just that when we do the ray trace, we can do the standard rays treating the image of the objective lens as the object of the eyepiece lens. All right, so let's write down some equations that we can use and that you can use for your homework. Oh, oh, sorry. First of all, yeah, I just wanted to emphasize where your eye is. There you go. So there's your big eyeball catching those diverging rays, and you're going to see this big virtual image right here. Okay, now let's write down some equations. For the objective lens, we have the thin lens equation. That's valid. And we also have the lateral magnification equation, big M minus Q sub O over P sub O. Lateral magnification is what we need to look at because we're forming a real image with the objective lens. Uh, typical objective lenses will have magnifications of, uh, what, 40x, 50x, 60x, 80x, up to about 100x. You're not going to see an objective magnification greater than 100x uh, because th there, the lens is so close to the slide, the object there. In fact, sometimes you'll use, if you've used a microscope with that really powerful objective, you'll put a drop of oil between the objective lens and the microscope slide. That actually helps with light collection. Um, it helps uh, get more light through refraction through the oil into the objective lens because it's so close. The specimen is so close to the lens. All right, now, um, the magnification of the objective is negative when we're using these equations. we got to remember that because the objective lens does invert the image. But people, when they talk about the magnifying power of an objective lens, they're probably not going to include the negative. They'll just say 60x. It's really negative 60 when we go to use these equations. Okay. All right. Now for the eyepiece, we have the thin lens equation. That's valid. And here we have to worry about the angular magnification because it's a magnifier. So we have 25 centimeters over P sub E. That's a valid e equation all the time for angular magnification for that lens. Okay. All right. Um, the total magnification of the microscope is the product of the two individual magnifications. So eyepiece magnifications are typically 5x, 10x. And those would be positive because the eyepiece doesn't invert the image. So if you have an objective magnification of minus 60 and an eyepiece magnification of 10, then your total magnification is minus 600 or 600x, as people would say. OK, the other thing, when you go to design, oh, I'm sorry, before I get to that. Um, we can add the, ob uh, the image distance of the objective and the eyepiece object distance to form what I called L. Notice that that is the actual separation of the two lenses. 
that'll be important when you go to design your microscope in your homework problem. And then what I was start what I started to say was, if you want to get the most out of your eyepiece lens to get the maximum angular magnification, you would like this image distance, this Q sub e, to be minus 25 centimeters. That way you're getting the most out of your eyepiece. So when you go to do your homework problem, you might want to pick that. In fact, I would suggest that you pick that as one of your constraints. The problem is, is open-ended. There's not just one design that will satisfy the initial constraints. Um, there, there are an infinite number of designs that will work, um, but to help you design a specific solution, I would pick Q sub e to be minus 25 centimeters. Okay, that's the microscope. Now, let's talk about a refracting telescope. So this would be one that uses two lenses, um, like uh, a, in a pirate movie, the kind that they pull out, extend with the tube, or there are astronomical telescopes looking at astronomical things that use two lenses. Um, but you're limited in magnification if you're using a refracting telescope uh, because there's a limit to how big you can make that refracting uh, first lens, that objective lens. So nowadays, really powerful telescopes are going to use a mirror as the objective. And then if you're going to use an eye to look at it, you'll look into an, a conventional eyepiece. Although nowadays, I don't think, I don't think astronomers even look into their eyepieces. They have a camera hooked up to their eyepiece and uh, they just record the digital image that the camera sees. But in any case, we're going to talk about refracting telescopes. I think the biggest diameter of refracting telescope, I think it's about a meter in diameter. Uh, that's a big hunk of glass. Uh, you can look that up to confirm that, but I think it's about a meter in diameter. Okay, all right, so we have an objective lens. Uh, just like we do right in the microscope. However, this objective lens, it is not going to act as a projector like in the microscope. In fact, it's going to act like a camera. Because if you think about it, right, the object is really far away. In fact, it's so far away, I'm not even going to draw the arrow on my slide because that wouldn't give me an accurate ray trace. So imagine though that I do a ray trace with this object really far away here are the two rays coming from it. Here's that ray that's parallel to the optic axis. It has to go through that green focal point. And then the other ray is coming from that far away arrow, and it's going through the center of the lens, straight through the center. So these rays do converge, and they form a tiny real image right there. See? So this is acting as a camera. I'm getting a real inverted image, really small. And you might say, well, that's not good. Why would I want to form a really tiny image with my telescope objective lens, right? I'm trying to make things look bigger. Ah, it is counterintuitive maybe, but what we want to do is form a real image of the object close to the eyepiece so we can use the eyepiece as a magnifying glass. So once again, the eyepiece will be a simple magnifier. So we want to make sure the real tiny image formed by the objective lens is formed um, in between the focal point, the front focal point of the eyepiece lens and the lens itself. That is also what we want right in the microscope. We want the eyepiece to act as a magnifier. But here again, we have a camera with a magnifier. In the microscope, we have a projector with a magnifier. All right, so if we do the ray trace, if we now treat that tiny little image as the object for the eyepiece, you're going to get these two rays, okay? And they are diverging. If you trace them back, you're going to get, and, and you catch those rays with your eye, you're going to get your final image right here, okay? All right, now, um, how do we define the magnification of this telescope? Uh, we can't really take the, the lateral magnification of the objective times the eyepiece angular magnification like we did with the microscope. 
um, that's not going to give us a meaningful magnification because the lateral magnification of the objective lens is going to be extremely small, right? If you're looking at uh, the moon, for instance, that H is humongous, that object height. This H prime is extremely tiny. So if you take H prime over H, you're going to get a ridiculously small magnification, which is not meaningful. So what we do is we formulate one magnification for the entire two lens system. And the way we do that is, let me label these distances, and then you'll see how we do that. I want you to see that the image distance for the objective lens, Q0, it is very close to the focal length of the objective lens. Right? This green dot here is the focal point of the objective lens. So the distance from the lens to that focal point is almost the same as the distance from the lens to that green arrow, right? the image distance. So we're going to make that approximation. And in practice, it's much closer than it even looks right here okay? in my ray trace diagram. Okay, the other thing I want you to look at is the object distance for the eyepiece from the green arrow to the eyepiece lens is almost the same as the focal length of the eyepiece lens from this orange focal point to the eyepiece lens. Okay, now I'm going to look at two triangles and I've, I've made the triangles bigger down here. The triangles I'm looking at are that green arrow is right here and its height is HO prime. That's the image height for the objective lens. It's also the object height for the eyepiece lens, but I label it as HO prime. Okay, and then um, the horizontal leg of this right triangle is this distance right here from the green arrow to the objective lens. Okay, and that's essentially F naught. The other triangle I'm looking at is with a horizontal leg from this green arrow to the eyepiece lens. And that's essentially the focal length of the eyepiece lens. Now, the angle formed from the objective lens to this image with the optic axis is theta naught. The angle formed um, with the optic axis and this ray right here that goes to the eyepiece lens is theta E. This theta E is going to be much larger than this theta naught. And that's how we're going to define the total angular magnification of the telescope. We're going to take theta E over theta O. The minus sign is there just to remind us that this is an overall negative mag magnification since the image is inverted compared to the initial object. Okay, now, like we did earlier, um, I think in an earlier video, right, we did this approximation, the small angle approximation. The tangent of an angle is approximately that angle if you use radians. So if I look at these two right triangles, the tangent of theta O is HO prime over FO approximately. The tangent of theta E is approximately HO prime over FE. So if I take this ratio, I can get a simplified version for my overall magnification of minus focal length of objective over focal length of eyepiece. So you might see that if you Google magnification of refracting telescope, you might see that equation. Okay, so um, quick way to, to approximate, get an approximate value for the magnification of your refracting telescope, take the focal length objective, divide by the eyepiece. I'm sorry, take the focal length of the objective and divide by the focal length of the eyepiece. Okay. Okay, that's it for the telescope. Again, you're not responsible for that, but you may want to look at the uh, microscope for your homework problem. Okay, that's it. Bye bye.